Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Number six, Maswimi Max, a renowned model and actress celebrated for her work with Playboy and Maxime, has passed away at the age of 45. On the morning of her demise, law enforcement was called to her residence in the Las Vegas area, where they discovered Max. While foul play is not suspected at the moment, an investigation into her death is underway. Max embarked on her modeling career in 2000 and quickly became a familiar face in various publications, including Maxime, Alt Magazine, and Bizarre Magazine, among others. Her appearances in Playboy and attendance at Playboy Mansion events marked some of the highlights of her career in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Beyond modeling, Maswimi Max also explored acting, appearing in several B-movies such as Cornman, American Vegetable Hero, and Giantess Battle Attack. She had a minor role in the film XXX State of the Union, featuring stars like Samuel L. Jackson and Ice Cube, where she portrayed Zeke's girlfriend, a character played by rapper Zibit. In recent years, Max shifted her focus towards alternative modeling, embracing horror and cabaret-style photo shoots and producing content for YouTube. Her unique style and persona garnered her a substantial online following, with over 300,000 Instagram followers dedicated to her work. Masuimi Max's contribution to the world of modeling and her vibrant presence in the alternative scene will be remembered by fans and colleagues alike. Her passing leaves a void in the hearts of those who admired her creativity and passion. Number 5. Orla Baxendale, a 25-year-old dancer from East Lancashire, England, tragically passed away from anaphylactic shock on January 11th after consuming cookies that failed to list peanuts on the ingredient label. Baxendale, who had moved to New York to pursue her passion for dance, was described by her family as a radiant and brave soul dedicated to following her dreams. The incident has sparked a recall of the vanilla Florentine cookies by Stu Leonard's, where the cookies were purchased in collaboration with the Food and Drug Administration. The recall affects 500 packs sold in two Connecticut stores between November 6th and December 31st, 2023. Baxendale's severe peanut allergy was well known to her, and she was cautious about her diet, always carrying an EpiPen. However, the severity of her reaction overpowered the emergency medication. Stu Leonard's has expressed deep regret over the incident, with Stu Leonard Jr. empathizing with the family's loss. The grocery retailer attributes the mistake to a recipe change by Cookies United, the wholesaler, which was supposedly not communicated to Stu Leonard's safety officer. However, Cookies United contends that Stu Leonard's was informed about the inclusion of peanuts in July 2023 and that the mislabeling occurred at Stu Leonard's repackaging facility. The Connecticut Department of Consumer Protection and the Department of Public Health are conducting an investigation into the matter, emphasizing the critical importance of accurate food labeling for people with allergies. This tragedy highlights the need for heightened awareness and stricter adherence to food allergen safety practices to prevent future incidents. Number 4. Jean Knight, a luminary in the realms of R&B and soul music, passed in Tampa, Florida at the age of 80. Born Jean Audrey Callisty on January 26, 1943, in New Orleans, Louisiana, Knight rose to fame with her 1971 hit single Mr. Big Stuff, a track that not only climbed to number two on the pop charts, but also secured a number one spot on the R&B charts, earning a Grammy nomination and achieving double platinum status. Knight's journey into music began in the mid-1960s, but it was her collaboration with record producer Wardell Quizergu that catapulted her to national fame. Despite initial rejections, Mr. Big Stuff was released by Stax Records following the success of King Floyd's Groove Me, recorded at the same studio. Knight's debut album under the same title garnered substantial success, 
though her stint with Stax was cut short due to disagreements with her producer and the label. Her post-Stax career saw Knight exploring various small labels without significant breakthroughs until 1981, when she released You Got the Papers, But I Got the Man, finding new audiences and continuing her performance career. In 1985, Knight enjoyed a resurgence with her cover of My Toot Toot, which outperformed Denise LaSalle's version in the U.S., peaking at number 50 on the pop charts and earning her a performance on solid gold. Knight's legacy extended beyond her recordings. She was recognized for her contributions to Louisiana music with an induction into the Louisiana Music Hall of Fame in October 2007. Her impact was felt on stages worldwide and in her community, where she was known for her Creole cooking and participation in Mardi Gras celebrations. Jean Knight leaves behind a legacy as a pioneering force in music, remembered for a song that became an anthem of empowerment and a testament to her enduring talent and charisma. Number 3. Michael Blakemore, a venerated figure in theater whose direction spanned continents and genres, passed away at the age of 95 after a brief illness. Born in Sydney, Australia in 1924, Blakemore's journey from aspiring medical student to celebrated director is a testament to the power of passion and perseverance. After failing his medical exams at the University of Sydney, Blakemore's pivot to the arts led him to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London, marking the beginning of a distinguished career in acting and directing. Blakemore's early acting career saw him gracing stages from the Theatre Royal, Huddersfield, to the Shakespeare Memorial Theatre. However, it was his transition to directing that solidified his legacy in the theatre world. His tenure at Glasgow Citizens Theatre, and later as an associate director at the National Theatre under Laurence Olivier, showcased his versatility and innovation. Blakemore's directorial prowess was recognized internationally, culminating in his historic dual Tony Award wins in 2000 for Best Director of a Play and Musical for Copenhagen and Kiss Me Kate, respectively. Beyond the stage, Blakemore made his mark in film, writing and directing works like Privates on Parade and Country Life, which explored themes from comedy to Chekhovian drama set against an Australian backdrop. His film Country Life was acclaimed, earning nominations from the Australian Film Institute. Blakemore's influence extended beyond his productions. His guidance shaped the National Theatre's direction during its formative years, and his collaborations with playwrights like Michael Frayn resulted in some of the most memorable theatre productions of the 20th century. Despite challenges, including a contentious departure from the National Theatre, Blakemore's commitment to the craft remained unwavering. Survived by his wife, English actress Shirley Bush, Blakemore leaves behind a legacy that transcends his Australian roots, embodying the spirit of theatre and film across the globe. His contributions to the arts, characterized by a blend of innovation, integrity, and a deep love for storytelling, will continue to inspire future generations of actors, directors, and audiences alike. Number 2. Norman Lear, a trailblazing figure in television and a staunch advocate for social justice, passed away from cardiac arrest as a complication of heart failure at his Los Angeles home at the age of 101. Born on July 27, 1922 in New Haven, Connecticut, Lear's career spanned over seven decades during which he revolutionized the television landscape with groundbreaking sitcoms like All in the Family, The Jeffersons, and Good Times. These shows, known for their portrayal of societal issues, earned Lear a place in the Television Academy Hall of Fame and numerous accolades, including six Primetime Emmy Awards, the National Medal of Arts in 1999, and the Kennedy Center Honors in 2017. Lear's early life was marked by adversity, including his father's imprisonment, which influenced his empathetic portrayal of complex characters. He served in the United States Army Air Forces during World War II, an experience that shaped his views on democracy and freedom. After the war, Lear's career transitioned from public relations to writing and producing for television, where he found his calling in creating content that mirrored and challenged American society. 
Aside from his television success, Lear was a political activist, founding the advocacy organization People for the American Way in 1980 to promote progressive values and counter the influence of the religious right. He also made significant contributions to the arts and media through the Norman Lear Center at the USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. Lear's personal life was as full as his professional one. He was married three times and had six children, leaving behind a legacy of creativity and activism that transcended his work on screen. His commitment to exploring and addressing social issues through television has left an indelible mark on American culture, making him a beloved figure whose impact will be felt for generations. Norman Lear's contributions to television, culture, and society have cemented his place as a pivotal figure in American history, whose work and advocacy continue to inspire. Number 1. Carla Bley, a groundbreaking figure in jazz as a composer, pianist, organist, and band leader, passed away at her home in Willow, New York, at the age of 87. Born in Oakland, California, in 1936, Bley was instrumental in the free jazz movement of the 1960s and was celebrated for her jazz opera Escalator Over the Hill, as well as her extensive portfolio of compositions performed by artists like Gary Burton, Jimmy Jaffray, and George Russell. Blay's journey into music was fostered by her father, a piano teacher and choir master who nurtured her talent from a young age. Moving to New York City at 17, she quickly became embedded in the jazz scene, encouraged by her first husband, jazz pianist Paul Blay. Her early compositions gained attention, leading to a prolific career that saw her compositions recorded by many jazz greats. A pivotal figure in the establishment of the Jazz Composers Guild in 1964, Blay's influence extended beyond her music to her role in pioneering, independent, artist-owned record labels. Her collaboration with Michael Mantler, whom she married and with whom she had a daughter, Karen Mantler, also a musician, led to the creation of the Jazz Composers Orchestra and the innovative JCOA and Watt record labels. Blay's arrangements for Charlie Hayden's Liberation Music Orchestra and her collaboration with artists like Jack Bruce and Nick Mason of Pink Floyd highlighted her versatility and broad appeal. Her work on Mason's Nick Mason's Fictitious Sports further cemented her status as a creative force in music. In her later years, Blay continued to compose and record, leaving a lasting legacy with her final album, Life Goes On, released in 2020. Diagnosed with brain cancer in 2018, Blay's battle with the illness culminated in her passing marking the end of an era for jazz music. Her contributions were recognized with numerous awards, including a Guggenheim Fellowship and the NEA Jazz Masters Award, underscoring her significant impact on jazz and the broader music world.